gentlemen, and welcome to this course AEM 501, and this is week 6. And in this week 6, we are still in module 3, and in this module 3, we are, taking the, we are treating the other part of it this week. Okay, and so the other part has to do with non-probability sampling. And of course, under this non-probability sampling, we'll be looking at quota sampling, purposive sampling, systematic sampling, and of course, double sampling. And along the line, we'll be looking at points to note when taking a sampling. Also, we'll be looking at statistical tools used in analyzing data. You, we know that there are two types of um, statistics, which are the, uh, descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. So we'll be looking at the different uh, analytical, to, analytical tools that would be suitable for analyzing data, whether it is descriptive or inferential. It's going to be an interesting topic, and I just encourage you to participate actively, and you'll be glad you did. Thank you very much. We want to look at non-probability sampling methods. Non-probability sampling is that sampling procedure in which there is no way of assessing the probability of the elements of the population being included in the sample. So, items or elements for the sample are selected deliberately by the researcher instead of using the techniques of random sampling. Some of the important techniques of non-probability sampling are quota sampling, purposive sampling, systematic sampling, and double quota sampling. In this method of quota sampling, the elements of the sample are selected until the sample, sorry, until the same proportion of selected characteristics which exist in the population is reached. This cons constitutes quota sampling. The main difference between quota sampling and proportionate ran stratified random sampling is that in quota sampling, the final selection of individuals is not random, whereas in the other one, which is a proportionate stratified sampling method, the final selection is a random. Ad advantages of this quota sampling system is that the method is convenient, is less costly, and can include the individuals from different strata of population. The disadvantages of quota sampling is that quota sampling being a non-random sampling method, it is potentially biased and so can lead to a large sample. Purposive sampling continuation, it is also, this, this is a purposive now, purposive sampling, which is the number two. It is also a non-random sampling method in which a sampling, in which a sample is arbitrarily selected because of the characteristics which they possess are deemed important for the research. In purposive sampling, the investigator has some belief that the sample being selected is a very good representative of the population. This is also known as judgment uh, sampling, and it is used for studying attitude of the people towards, the nation, towards national issues. A it could be a sample of journalists, it could be a sample of teachers, it could be a sample of legislators, and so on and so forth. This, this method, which is purposive sampling, ensures that those individuals will be included in the sample that is relevant to the subject design. This is a popular method for students. Talking about systematic sampling, this is also a non-random sampling method in which every end term is chosen from a list of numbered elements. Thus, every element does not have a chance of being drawn once the starting point is selected. In applying systematic sampling, the starting point is often chosen randomly and sometimes changed several times during the selection process to improve the chances of representativeness, especially in ordered lists. Examples of systematic sampling include selecting every seventh term on a roll of 70 students, just selecting a particular roll out of a, 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 a set of numbers. Okay. This method is easier, it is faster, and less expensive to carry out, particularly with a large population. But it is potentially a biased sampling method. It is biased and 
it, it, it is quite misleading and it of course it leads to misleading conclusions if selecting every every tenth name in a list in a list once the starting point is selected every tenth name has a 100 percent probability of being selected whereas the nine names in between have zero probability of being selected and that's why we say it is a bias there double sampling this is defined as drawing a sum a small sample of individuals from a bigger sample of them for example the researcher wants to study the knowledge of new married couples towards family planning through mailed questionnaires when he wants if that double sampling method is to be used what he does first is that for this purpose he she may uh, the researcher will not mail something like a one a one thousand uh, questionnaire to one thousand couples residing in different locality and of course at the end of the day it's possible that they will not so return like 500 questionnaires out of which he now draws a sample of maybe 100 and the next thing he does is to mail another one that will now help him to get an in-depth knowledge about this particular family name, family planning name method this method has it, the disadvantage of taking much time and labor of the research points to note during sampling having selected a suitable sampling method the remaining problem is to determine the sample size this is not easy the points to note when drawing some sampling are the greater the accuracy required in the true representation of the population the larger the sample must be the two the size of the sample also should be in direct relationship to the number of questions asked the amount of details required in the analysis of the data and the number of controls introduced it is generally accepted that Conclusions reached from the study of a large sample are more convincing than those from number three. The amount of variability within the population is another important factor in determining a suitable sample size. Obviously, in order that every session of a diverse population is adequately represented, a larger sample will be required than if the population were more homogeneous. However, the more heterogeneous a population is, the larger the sample size. Statistical tools. There are two meanings to the word statistics. To the word, to the word statistics. The first is the science of collecting and analyzing numerical data, especially in large quantities and usually inferring proportions in a whole from proportion in a representative sample. The second refers to any, stat any systematic collection or representation of such facts like population statistics are records of population numbers and makeup. Statistical methods deal purely with quantitative data or with qualitative data which are expressed in numerical terms. One of the primary purposes of scientific investigation is to discover relationships among phenomena in order to explain, in order to explain, predict, and possibly control their occurrences. It is in the discovery that and quantification of these relationships that statistical methods are valuable to. We are talking here about correlation rather than causal relationships. Correlation techniques generally aim to answer three questions about two variables or sets of data the first is that does a relationship exist between the two variables or sets of data if so what is the direction of the relationship and what is the magnitude of the relationship statistical tools in continuation a wide range of techniques can be used depending on the nature of the variables being analyzed the techniques are kruska gamma gottmann's lambda and chi-square it is you if statistical tests are to be used to analyze the data there are usually minimum sample sizes specified from which any significant results can be obtained and the calculation is carried uh, package however the researcher must be able to understand the function and applicability of the various tests to your own sets of data However, also, 
the researcher is advised to, to follow the rule, first rule of statistics, which says always consult a qualified statistician. Then the second rule is know enough about statistics to be able to view the advice. Those uh, type of uh, parametric. The two classes of parametric statistics are descriptive and inferential. Descriptive statistics provide a method of quantifying the characteristics of the data. The center of gravity of the data, their point of central tendency, can be determined by finding the mode or the median and any of their several means. These, these measures have their own characteristics and applications and should be chosen with regard to the data. Mean and mode coincide with the mean. The measure of the dispersion of the data, how flat or steep the Gaussian curve appears, is an indication of how many of the data closely resemble the mean. The flatter the curve, the greater is the amount of data that deviate from the mean. Occurrence of skewness in data leads to non-symmetrical curve. The main purpose of statistical analysis is to identify and quantify relationships between variables. This is the type of this is the type of research called correlation research, although only correlation does not provide answers to research and problems. Coefficient of correlation. The technical term of, for the measure of correlation is the correlation of coefficient. Is the coefficient of correlation. There are too many types of this. The person the persons being the most uh, common. It is possible to measure the correlation between more than two variables if you use appropriate uh, tests. There is necessarily a causal bond between the variables and this is that that, co that causes the effects on the inferential statistics. Inferential statistics goes beyond describing the characteristics of data and the examination of correlations between them. It is also used to produce predictions through inferences based on the data analyzed. Inferential statistics is also used to test statistical based hypotheses. The predictive role is limited to estimating population parameters from simple statistics. Three parameters are commonly estimated. They are central tendency, variability, and Two types of estimate can be made of population parameters, and they are point estimate and interval estimate. Point estimate attempt to pinpoint the population parameter through the sample statistics value. Point estimate produces a precise estimate of the parameters of the population. The values are greatly dependent on the true representation quality of the sample. Interval estimates of parameters are the sample statistics to predict the band within which almost all of the values were. Null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is a statistical based hypothesis. It's a statistical based hypothesis and it is commonly referred to this null hypothesis. Inferential statistics are usually used to test null hypotheses. It is usually stated in the negative forms, that is, there is no difference or there is no significant relationship between variables. After calculation or analysis, the null hypothesis could be proved to be wrong, either due to incorrect design or faulty non-parametric statistics. N not all data are parametric. That is, samples and populations sometimes do not behave in the form of a Gaussian curve. Data measured by nominal and ordinal methods will not be organized in curve form. Nominal data tend to be in the dichotomous form of either or or. Why ordinal data can be displayed in the form of a set of steps. Statistical tests built around discovering the means Standard deviations, etc., are clearly inappropriate for analyzing this type of data. And uh, you, as you, thank you for listening and remain. Blessed.